Hi there. Welcome to or welcome back to Tiff Reads Books, where I read books and I talk to you about them. This week, I thought I'd give you a wrap up. I haven't done one in a while, but I'm kind of struggling to know which book I really want to talk about. I did the review of Ava Reads Lady Macbeth most recently, and I just, I'm still so overwhelmed with how negatively I feel about that, that I just don't really feel like doing a long video talking about another book because I'm just struggling with all of the feelings I still have about that book. <laughs> so in lieu of that, I thought I'd give you a little wrap up. I want to say in the beginning, if you see something that I've talked about here that you would like a longer review of, please let me know and I will do one because I'm going to try to be very brief um, in this wrap up because I do have quite a few things to talk about. It's less than my previous months, um, but it's still quite a bit of stuff. Um, and I think that makes it a little harder for me to talk about. I have talked about a few of the things already, so it may go a little bit quicker. Also, for my next non-review video, I either am going to do a TBR or I've been playing around recently on Instagram with pulling tarot cards, giving you the review, like bullet points of what each tarot card means, and then saying if I was going to read a book along these themes, I would look for a book with, the, with a theme of this, this, and this. So I think that could be kind of fun. I can do a few card pulls and then we can kind of go from there and we can figure out um, what type of books we would want to read for those things. So if either of those sound good to you, please let me know in the comments and whether you would rather have a TBR or some tarot card recommendations, especially since we're heading into spooky season. I do tarot year round, but I know for a lot of people it's like on theme for the next month or two. So let me know what you think. Okay, so let's get into it. I did read 17 books this month according to story graph. However, I want to preface this by saying two of those were manga and six of them were short stories because Amazon does these really cool short story collections, but they, instead of putting them all as like one book, that each one is its own entry with its own ISBN. So it comes up as six books, 10 books and two manga is what I read this month. So real quick, we'll start with the manga because I'm not going to review them. I'm continuing with the Chainsaw Man series. I think the first book hooked me more than the subsequent ones because I'm up to book seven and each one is getting a little less and less of me enjoying it. I think the campiness is still fun. They are completely ridiculous and they do feel very self-aware that they're ridiculous. Let's talk about the audiobooks that I did this month because even my audiobook reading was down for me. Um, I was just really busy with like social things. We went camping twice and I was <laughs> trying to get on top of my housework that had been lacking from my field work. And then I started working my horse again because the days started getting a little bit cooler and now we're super hot again. It's like 95 degrees again. And that might not be hot for where you are, but up here in the Pacific Northwest, it's hot and I'm not enjoying it. I'm not built for this. So even my audiobook reading was down. <laughs> um, okay, so the first book I did finish was Paladin's Hope, which is the third book in the Saint of Steel series by T. Kingfisher. These are her romanticy series, and I kind of shocked myself in the fact that I liked these books. Um, each one follows a different paladin from the Saint of Steel, and in the first book, Paladin's Grace, we learn that the Saint of Steel has died, and what happens to you when a god dies? Well, Lots of PTSD happens to you when a god dies. So we're following each of the men from these groups, but we're actually kind of focusing on both them and a love interest for each book. It's one of that type of series. I don't normally go for romanticity, so I was kind of surprised myself that I enjoyed these, but I think T. Kingfisher's writing is just really funny for me. It works. The pacing is very quick, um, and the characters are very diverse in their body shapes and their histories. We have older characters typically who've had a lot of life experience and I really enjoy that aspect of it. So I've talked before about T. Kingfisher's female characters um, last year, almost a year ago, when I first read these Paladin's Grace and Swordheart and Nettle and Bone, which is not a romanticy but has a similar type of female character. And I was like, I do we have another type of personality? And I can say we do. I'm going to get into that in another video maybe, but we do. I was very happy to see something different. The third book follows Galen, and he is 
a little bit different than the other paladins that we're following who are both big, tall, burly men who are very much into women. And Galen is not as burly. He is the handsome one and he's also into men. And so we're following him as he falls in love with a doctor um, when in the middle of bodies and a maze crawler. And it's, it's definitely an interesting story. It's much more fast paced than all of the other ones this much shorter book than the other one, than the first two, but I did really enjoy it. I liked the mystery. We also got to learn more about some of the um, gnolls, which are the non some of the non-human characters in the story. And I really enjoyed getting to know more about their culture and the world T. Kingfisher's build. The next audiobook I read actually was recommended to me by two people on Instagram who would not stop talking about it and then told me I absolutely had to read it. And I am so glad I did. So this is recommended to me by I Don't Give a Fantasy Funk, and Lisa does books. So I'll put both their Instagrams up here. They are wonderful women and I absolutely adore both of them. And if you are in line with any of my fantasy tastes and books, you will also be in line with them. So if you're not following them already, give them a follow. They are fantastic people and I adore them. The Blade Itself is the book they recommended to me. <laughs> and I love this book. I did not think that I could read an entire book of characters who are absolutely terrible people and go, give me more. But I did. So this is really hard to explain because there's not a lot of plot in the first book. There is a lot of political world building happening and we're learning a lot of history of the region and a lot of things are starting to happen. But there really isn't a whole hell of a lot of plot until near the end of the book. So this is multi POV. And I'm going to remind myself real quick of the characters names. I'll start with, <laughs> we're following one of our characters is Glockta. That's his last name. Can I remember his first name? No. Um, he is the head torturer, essentially, in this world. He works for the government, um, which I believe is a king. Uh, yeah, king. And so he works as the one of the, one of the head torturers. And he has been pretty horribly disfigured from a torture he himself experienced. So we're dealing with a lot of his, um, thoughts about himself, his PTSD, his depression, him not liking who he is, him not liking how he came to be, but doing his job and doing it well. He's a very intelligent man and a weirdly empathetic at times character. The next character we're following is Logan and Logan is from the North and these people are kind of seem to be a little bit inspired by Norse Viking mythology slightly and they tend to be viewed as stupid and barbaric and we kind of learn that they're not um but that a lot of people really think they are especially one of our other characters who hate it <laughs> um, like really hate it uh but Logan gets in that he's the first character introduced to us and we're introduced to him like being attacked in the very beginning of the book and he gets separated from his group and his group thinks he died and he ends up coming down to this major city and at the beginning of a war with his country. And he's involved in that tertiarily and it's a whole interwoven thing. Logan is probably the most likable character in the book. It's the fact that he's trying to overcome and outrun a past of violence. And I really appreciated a lot of his viewpoints. His humor was pretty on point. But again, none of these people are good people. The next POV that we get is, what is his name? The character that I hated the most is Giselle. And he, oh, Giselle. Giselle is the most pompous, arrogant asshole in this whole book. And there's a lot of pompous, arrogant assholes. But Giselle is also like racist and sexist on top of it. And I mean, everybody also kind of is, but he is like, way up front with it and so he's training to do this whole competition sword fight thing so that he can get a promotion and be higher up in the military because he wants the glory and he believes that he deserves it because of his noble background he's a dick <laughs> and then we have west west is the military rank i'm bad with military ranks he's the military rank right above giselle and he is the one person who i was like okay He's kind of a good guy. He's got a, a lot of things going for him. And then he fucks it up. And I was like, can I not just have one nice thing in this story? Not one nice thing. Halfway through the book, we get introduced to a female character who's incredibly 
ridiculously over the top feral and bloodthirsty. And I actually appreciated her for the diversity of what she was. Um, and in the middle, there's all these other POVs and other things that we get, but those are kind of our main characters. And this is a whole getting the band together. We're on the brink of war and shit is about to happen. It's way longer than I wanted it to be, but I've literally never heard anyone describe what this book is actually about. I've just been told to read it and I understand why. The audio on this, I will say, is absolutely fantastic. It is read by Stephen Pacey. Stephen Pacey's voices for these characters are on point. They're so good. Each character is differentiated extremely well and not in a cringy way. Even his women voices are not horrible. Like I've heard some horrible women's voices recently. His are, his are pretty good. I really appreciated them. So this, if you like audiobooks, this one is great on audio. I got it from my local library. I absolutely loved it. This one's 22 hours, which is part of what held me up with the rest of them. And because the audio narration was so good, I did not listen to it at my normal like two speed. If I have a really good audio narrator where I want to hear their natural pacing, I'll tend to listen to it between one and a half and 1.75. If you play around with the pacings, I have found that 1.0 is actually way slowed down from people's normal voices. So 1.5 to 1.75, I went back and forth between there because um, there were some scenes where I was just really enjoying it. And I was like, I need to know what happened. And I like, sped it up. <laughs> so Because, um, you know, like when you do it, when you're reading a really good book, you're like, oh my God, and like speed up just to see what happens next. So I, I tend to do that a little bit with audio. Um, the next audiobook I read, I did not enjoy as much, but I did finish it because I... I needed to. <laughs> I had this little niggling thing after I watched the movie, um, John Carter of Mars, and I had made a little note like, hey, if the book is free on Audible or available through the library through audio, I will give it a listen. It's, one, it's a classic sci-fi. I'm not very versed in sci-fi. I thought I would give it a go. So it was free on Audible with um, really good sound. It was one of the audio ex Audible exclusive ones. I don't really enjoy it. And I think it's just a, it's just a piece of its time for its time. This book came out in, let me, let me look real quick because 1912 is the original publication date. So if you think about what was happening in books in 1912, this was, I can see why it's a classic. It was doing some pretty advanced things. Um, the things that I didn't like about it were honestly just the language around, um, people of other cultures. We are definitely heavily looking down on these Martian people. Okay, let me back up. So A Princess of Mars is the book and it's by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is a classic sci-fi of a man who stumbles into a cave and finds himself transported to Mars, but not his physical body, just his like essence essentially, but he gets a body on Mars. And he of course falls in love with the first human looking woman. So that's the story. Um, but he's like really, really good at everything. And so because he is a Civil War veteran, he fought for the Union. He is such a good strategist, strategist, he is such a good strategist that nobody on Mars in this war torn world where everybody is a warrior has anything on his strategy skills because he's from Virginia. So he's got the best strategy skills. Um, He's also a Virginia gentleman, so nobody can like out talk him. He is like the most charismatic man to ever charisma. And he's also like, he can jump higher and run faster because Earth's gravity is stronger than Mars's gravity. So he's actually strong for the world that he's on, which is fair. But the fact that we do not call Mary Sue's John Carter's is a travesty because really that's what we should be calling them. So yeah. Definitely worth taking a look at it if you were into sci-fi and want to know the history of it and things that used to be popular. But not for me. But the Library at Mount Char. This was a Carrie Can Read wreck. Um, absolutely wild story. Absolutely wild. I liked it, but I don't necessarily know like why. <laughs> it was um it was a it was an experience. So this is following Caroline. Or Carolyn, the audio narrator randomly decided to pronounce it both ways, um, which was fun for me, <laughs> and not from different characters, from from the actual like inner voice because it's it's third person, but it's from Carolyn's point of view. So, um, 
Yeah, that was fun. Um, she is a librarian, but that's just the best translation of the word that we have. So her and her 11 adopted siblings grew, grew up in this library that is actually outside of space and time. It's its own, if you're familiar with pocket universes, it's a pocket universe, essentially. And she was taken there as a child to be given one catalog of the universe. The universe is broken up into these 12 catalogs. So Carolyn's catalog is the languages. And she was raised in this a very abusive household. And she was abused not only by father, which is the guy who was training them. And he's allowed to know every catalog, but the children are only allowed to know one catalog. And they are not allowed to do anything outside of their catalog or dire consequences, including death. Dogs drinking water. So Carolyn grew up in this very abusive family. Um, she was also abused by one of her adoptive brothers whose catalog was war. And um, we spend most of the book learning about what happened, why father's gone and where he went and people trying to find them. And what this really is, is Carolyn's revenge story. And I liked it a lot for that. I think there was a couple chapters at the end where I, we probably could have just ended it maybe, I think four or five chapters before the actual ending. Once Carolyn got her revenge and we kind of got an answer to what happened, I think the book really could have ended. I didn't necessarily need the, the rest of it, but it did wrap up a lot of questions in that last bit of it. I think I just wasn't satisfied completely with the ending, but this was a very harrowing experience. This is a horror. It, it's labeled as a fantasy, but this is a horror fantasy because of the elements that happen within it. We're dealing with horrible violence, gore, abuse, of abuse of children, abuse of adults, of domestic abuse. We're dealing with SA, like very violent graphic things. It's only a fantasy in the sense that it doesn't take place in our universe. It takes place in kind of definitely like a parallel type one because of that whole pocket universe -y thing. You could almost call it a sci-fi. It's not... It's not a fantasy, I would say, but it has some fantastical elements to it. Um, if you do like things that are darker and a little bit more literary, I think this this could be enjoyable. I did find it interesting, um, at, for sure. Um, and then, okay, before I get to the Audible Originals, because I'm like running out of time already from what I wanted to be at. Before I get to the Audible Originals, let's talk about My Heart is a Chainsaw very quickly. I was obsessed with this. I read it so quickly and immediately jumped to the next book. I'm already on the third. My Heart is a Chainsaw is a trilogy that can read a little close to YA, but I do think the themes in it are very adult. Um, I've seen some reviews that say it's a little YA, but... Um, I, I enjoyed it. I don't necessarily view it as a YA horror, but it is a horror. Um, this follows Jay Daniels. This is by Stephen Graham Jones. This follows Jay Daniels, and she is a senior in high school, and she's obsessed with horror movies and slashers, and she's had a fairly traumatic upbringing, and she kind of uses these to deal with her surroundings, and now she feels like a slasher has come to her hometown, and she is the only one who can stop it. However, she's treated a bit like a Cassandra, which they gets brought up in later books too, that she, she, she's not the final girl, she's the Cassandra. And so she's dealing with all of that. <laughs> um, I have seen some reviews that were like, that I, as far as the Stephen Graham Jones, I don't think this does his normal thing with race and class as much as most people were expecting. And it kind of got I've seen some lower reviews because it didn't do what they were expecting in regards to that. And I think normally the books that I've read, he does tend to do that. However, this one is more about control than it is about race and class. He, there are underlying things that Jade's race being half black feet and her class being poor, that she has dealt with things that her classmates have not. And we are living in this small town in Idaho where very wealthy people have moved in across the lake and are trying to gentrify her town. But Jade has experienced some very traumatic things in her life and she's more looking for a way to control the narrative of the things that are happening, ar happening around her. So it's more about PTSD and control and I am obsessed. I love this. Oh, we're getting some mood lighting. Okay, listen to the Trespass series, um, which is an Amazon original uh short story collection it's three it's 
free through Prime, and it's I believe it's also on Kindle Unlimited. So it's through, I did the audios through Prime um, because there was a few in here that I wanted to read or listen to. Um, there's a Silvio Moreno Garcia and a Stephen Graham Jones and a Carmen Maria Machado that I wanted to listen to because I knew those authors. I actually really did enjoy most of the series. So there are six short stories in here. Um, I will read you my little snippet reviews because these are very short. Tiger Came to the Mountains by Silvia Moreno Garcia is the first story. I didn't really enjoy it. I gave it a three. It just kind of felt like a nothing. Um, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. It's, it's very short. It's one of the shorter ones on here at 28 minutes to listen to. And it is about a sibling and about siblings and about escaping violence. And it does involve a tiger. And that is important to me later. <laughs> the second one is Wildlife. I really enjoyed this one. I give this one a four and a half. This is by Jeff Vandermeer. I had never read anything from this author before. This is a woman who's just moved into a house kind of in the middle of nowhere in order to escape something that recently happened to her. And I said that it was tense, eerie, and uncomfortable. It does a good job of making you connect with the characters and feel the tension they're experiencing in a very short space. Each of these books has something to do with a character that is somewhere they are not supposed to be and a nature element to them as well. So if you keep that in mind, the third one, apparently these went in in a weird order. Uh, the Backbone of the World is the Stephen Graham Jones one. This one is wild and I loved it. It was eldritch horror um, set in the Blackfeet Reservation in Big Sky Country. And prairie dogs were involved <laughs> and it was it was something i wrote that it was tense and unexpected with a splash of humor i did find everything that was happening funny and scary at the same time which i think stephen graham jones does a fairly good job of in a very different way than like grady hendrix does which i think both of them have a pretty good sense of humor about the things that they're writing and i, I enjoy that about their writing but definitely very different i i did like this one um the fourth one is Stag by Karen Russell. I also did not enjoy this one very much. This is about a man who gets invited to a wedding of people, or a, no, a divorce party. A divorce party that's like a wedding. It's like an unwedding um, of people he's never met before. Um, he makes this weird connection with a tortoise, and I did not feel the tension in the story. I didn't feel a sense of mystery. I didn't really care about this character or what he was doing. I think it needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. That's, I just, it was an hour and 12 minutes of me going, well, why do I care? So not for me. <laughs> um, a Righteous Man by Tochi Onyabuchi. I'm probably saying that wrong. This one was interesting, um, but I didn't really like it all that much. I think it needed a little bit more. This was a missionary who's writing letters to his wife, um, He's in Africa and he's grappling with his feelings about African slavery. Um, it's a letter format. And I think that's what made it hard. It's, I think in this short of space, letters are very difficult to convey what's happening. It does add to that sense of mystery, but at the same time, I think it just didn't put that tension into it. It felt like I was missing a lot of context and in this shorter space is really hard to like for me to connect with. Um, and then the last one is, it does end with tigers. It starts and ends with tigers. And I really liked that. Um, Bloody Summer by Carmen Maria Machado. This is also one of the ones that I liked. So Wildlife was a four and a half. The Backbone of the World was a four and a half. And Bloody Summer was a four. So these were my three favorites out of the six. Um, this was very literary. If you've read Her Body and Other Parties, I think you'll expect that maybe from her. Um, it was... <laughs> It was very fantastical, but set in the real world. Um, it's about this massacre that happened over one day in the summer. And we're getting the story through a researcher who is writing an article about the event through gathered notes. Um, it was a very interesting premise, and I would have loved to see it fleshed out a little bit more. Like, I would read a whole book of this story, I think, because I think it would be really interesting to do a whole book about this. Um, so... Those are the audios I listened to last month. I, like I said, I had started <sighs> Don't Fear the Reaper. I finished it on like the second day of September and I am halfway through The Angel of Indian Lake and it is the 5th of September. So 
that one came through yesterday. <laughs> My library hold came through yesterday and I'm halfway through it already. So if that tells you anything about what I feel about this series, it's going to be like end of the year wrap up for my tops is going to be series. <laughs> like, all right. So let's go back um, a little bit. And I did read some, I started the month off with a novella, uh, The Butcher of the Forest by Premi Mohammed. I had heard a little bit about this scene all over Instagram in the beginning um, of the summer when it, I think it just came out like beginning of the summer, end of the end of spring, something like that. Um, this is interesting. This is a fantasy about a woman who gets forced to go into the woods to rescue a child from the um, the tyrant. They call him the tyrant, um, is what they call the ruler of their area. She's forced to go rescue the child. And the woods are those types of woods that eat adventurers alive. So she's trying to survive throughout it. And we're learning about her as she's traversing through this and learning about the world. I, I really enjoyed it. I was pretty hooked on it um, for a shorter story. It was I thought it was really well done. So I had an ARC, an advanced reader copy of She Who Knows, which is the prequel to Who Fears Death. Um, this is getting its own ARC series, or ARC, this is getting its own novella series, it looks like. Um, the sequel to She Who Knows, which is called One Way Witch, has just been announced. They think they're so cool. Um, the sequel has just been announced. So this prequel novella follows... Anya Sanwu's mother, if you've read um, Who Fears Death, you know that it is based on the genocide in Sudan and it is very graphic and violent and it deals a lot with not only racism, but colorism and misogyny and sexism and all of the isms. And it is um, dark and important <laughs> like i struggled with it but that's not the point of, of this so um she who knows i liked more i think than who fears death i actually wanted this one to be longer because i think who fears death could have been shorter but i think this one could have been longer um this is following uh, like i said anya sanwu's mother and what is her name najiba her name is Najiba, and we're following her as a teenage girl. She gets this call to go on this journey to the salt roads that only men go on, and her father's actually really excited that she got this call. It's like this feeling that she knows it's time. And so he brings her along. He's like, there's nothing that says that women can't go on this. It's just traditionally only men. So he brings her along. Her brothers are kind of upset about it, and it's it becomes this whole thing, and she really comes into herself and learns about her powers, which she has. If you've read Who Fears Death, you know um, and so it's about her growing up and her life, man, is so tragic. Knowing what I know about what happened to her after the events of this book, her life is so tragic. And I, she is like the strongest character that I have read anything about, which is why I, I just liked this so much more. I think she had so much more space to breathe than Anya Sanwu did. And I think that made her much more of a 3D character. Um, and it kind of just shows like that there's been some growth in Nnedi Okorafor's writing, which I, I think when you see a seasoned author who grows in their ability um, is absolutely amazing to see like someone who's already good get even better. Um, and I really, I really liked it. Um, it is tragic. So I definitely recommend that. It just came out in August. Um, it's only 176 pages. I definitely recommend picking it up. I don't know if the audio is good. I have not read it but on audio, but I read it on uh, Kindle. Pine, I have talked to you about. This is my Scottish Gothic crime book <laughs> um, that I really liked and think is really worth giving a read. So definitely check that out if you have not already. Um, I did a longer video on it and I think it was really good. Um, and that brings us to The Shadow of the Gods, which I did as a buddy read on Instagram with a huge group of people. We are currently reading the second book. I have not started it yet. Um, I liked this. I, I like this. I have opinions. So Shadow of the Gods follows three characters. I only knew about Orca's story. Um, the only thing that I'd ever heard about this was it's about a mother whose son gets stolen and she goes on a revenge quest to get him back. And I don't think that's accurate <laughs> to what the book is about. Um, there are actually three characters in here that we are following POVs from. So yes, one of them is Orca and her, <laughs> half the group 
kept calling her okra because they were like no orca is free willy <laughs> but it's orca with a k um she does go on a revenge mission to get her son for these kidnappers and that is kind of the overarching thing is these kidnappers are taking these kids and we don't quite know why um until partway through the book but you can kind of piece out why they're taking them once you start to learn more about the world this is heavily inspired by norse mythology and Scandinavian folklore in general. Um, John Gwynn is apparently a Norse uh, reenactor, a Viking reenactor. So he's had to learn a lot about the Scandinavian history. And so he does write um, the types of armor and weapons that they would actually use like fairly accurately to my understanding and well, um, his fighting scenes are actually really good. The other characters we're following, one of them is Varg. I always wanna say Vargas, but it's Varg. Um, he is an escaped thrall. So slavery does exist in this world and plays a very big part in it. And that was hard for some people in the Instagram group. So if that's something that's hard for you to read, or you don't really enjoy characters who are approving of it, because it's just such a normal thing in this world that nobody, a lot of the characters, I won't say nobody, um, because a thing does happen, but a lot of the main characters don't really bat an eye about it. Um, and so Varg is freed. Um, through an event that we get revealed later and he's trying to find a witch to perform a <sighs> some sort of ritual for him and we don't really know why until near the end and then our third character we're following is Elvar. Elvar was actually my favorite um, and she is just a girl <laughs> she's just a girl who really wants some battle glory that's honestly all like her motivation is paper thin and i don't care <laughs> i just really liked her you learn a little bit more about why she is trying like why what she's trying to escape as the story goes on and i think that reveal was really interesting and gave her some depth um i made this meme <laughs> because i had to hear about troll testicles twice and I was not expecting that. Um, so yeah. Um, the reason I didn't connect with Orca as much is she is a physical abuse parent and I get that was probably how people were, but it's still not easy for me to just like brush it off as, Oh, it was part of the times. I'm still like, I have mommy issues. So <laughs> I struggled to be like, Orca is my favorite. I just think I like Belvar. Um, I do like them all. Orca is Big Bear Lady, and I love Big Bear Lady. Um, but I didn't connect with her right away. Um, John Gwynn's writing was a little hard for me. Uh, it was a little interesting for me. <laughs> I like struggled through a little bit of it. It was very dry in a lot of it until you got to the fighting scenes. He did the fighting scenes really well. His dialogue is really good in a lot of places. There are some places where I'm like, characters are going, hmm, in response to things, and I'm like, did I need that? Did I need that, John? Because I don't think I needed that. Um, but <laughs> other aspects of it were a little dry. Some things that I thought should have been explained and I would have liked to see in the scene. And then other things I saw in the scene, I was like, why am I seeing this in a scene? So I've heard book two gets better. Um, it is longer, <laughs> but I did end up um, tandem reading this with... Um, audio and the physical book just to get through it a little bit faster because the pacing was kind of str a struggle for me um, in the way that it was written. Uh, but I did enjoy it and I am looking forward to the next book. And then the last book was Lady Macbeth. And I finished this on the 30th, so I only finished this like six days ago, which is why I'm still like <sighs> about it. Um, I started spiraling and rereading the play Macbeth and I did get through <laughs> like 20 pages of it last night and was like, I got to the point where um, Macbeth is writing a letter. Lady Macbeth reads this letter and it's like from Macbeth and it says, um, my dearest and greatest partner. And I was like, Are you my dearest and greatest partner, but we made him an abusive asshole for no fucking reason other than to go men bad. Like, and I do love, if you've, if you've watched him, I love a men bad book but I just needed more substance than men bad, fragile, frail, teenager, good. Like, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but that's what I have for you today is a wrap up on things I read. It does actually seem like a lot when I sit here and talk about it. Um, and I'm still on this whole thing. I'm like, I feel like I read, I'm, 
I don't know, every now and then I start to spiral and be like, I'm focusing on the numbers. I'm not really, it's just that I'm constantly reading something. And sometimes I'm like, maybe I need to take more time to digest. There's things that I want to talk about when I read something, but I feel like I need to jump to the next thing. So I think what I'm going to start doing, again, <laughs> tangents, I think what I'm going to start doing is limiting myself in my number of library holds I can put out because the problem is a library hold comes through and then I'm like, oh, I got to read that. And so I just start like reading it instead of doing the next thing, because I'm worried about where it says like eight people are waiting. And I'm like, I know, but I have to do many other things. So speaking of, <laughs> I am currently reading Sky on Fire um, as a physical book. I am listening to The Angel of Indian Lake. I have a digital book that I kind of started reading, but I'm going to jump to something else because sometimes I just like to read on my Kindle. I don't want to bring a physical library book with me and I'm about to start field work again. Um, and so while I'm waiting in between fish to sample, I am probably going to be reading on my phone again. So I will be reading The Will of the Many because there is a high chance I'm going to DNF it. Um, but I am debating just giving it back to the next person and just being like, no, I need to focus on other things because I have that as a long book. I have The Shadow of the Gods as a long book because I need to start that for the buddy read. I have um, Scythe came through um, and I have, like I said, Sky and Fire. I have an arc that I need to get done. Um, a Dark and Drowning Tide comes out September 17th and I want to finish that before. So I'm just gonna put up the, <sighs> the graphic I made of what I'm planning on reading this month. Um, because it feels like a lot. So I think I might just give back the will of the many and delay it for another time because it just feels like too much long fantasy right now. The reason I want to prioritize Shadow of the Gods is I have an arc of Fury of the Gods. So <sighs> I'm trying to breathe. <laughs> anyway, if you made it this far with me, um, Drop me an emoji in the comments of a dragon because last one was smogist and I was trying to read dragon books, but I got distracted. And I'm so glad I got that unexpected smogist in Lady Macbeth um, because at least I got to read two dragon books last one <laughs> out of the three I was trying to read. Um, so yeah, drop me a dragon emoji, either one. And let me know um, if you read any of these and give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will hopefully have some sort of review for you soon. If you want me to talk about any of these in more depth, let me know and I will do a review. I'll see you next time.